Welcome back to Building Cyber Resilience on Trusted Data Protection Infrastructure, brought to you by Dell Technologies and Intel. I'm pleased to bring Rich Colbert, Field CTO of Data Protection at Dell, into the conversation along with Rob. Guys, the core of this announcement is really the new data domain appliances. Now these appliances for the audience were a category creator going back over a decade ago, mm -hmm. and they've endured. What has made data domain such a durable product category over all these years? Well, I think it's a couple things. I think that the data domain product uh, has a track record with performance, uh, scale, and efficiency. Those three things really go together, right? The ability to handle uh, an organization's entire backup workload in a reasonable amount of time and a reasonable amount of space. So having that kind of that secret, you know, that secret formula, secret sauce, whatever you want to call it, to be able to be reliable in that sense. But I think more so than that is that the data domain platform has become the trusted storage of last resort. Um, data domain systems do what they say they're going to do. They protect the data. They have an obligation to providing that data when something bad happens to it. And so a lot of organizations have come to rely on not just the, um, the features of the system, but the durability and the ability to trust it to get their data back. Yeah, it really is the, uh, the, the choice of customers in the market. Um, as you mentioned, the, the market's been uh, tracked for over a decade. And, and still today, you know, coming out of 2023, 42% of all dollars spent on back of appliances is uh, spent on Dell Technologies Power Protect appliances. Um, and that's, to me, it's, um, it's obviously very welcome, uh, but um, it really does show that, that customers continue to go from generation to generation. And as we discussed earlier, the, the next generation of data domain appliances, the ability to move from one generation to another is, is really straightforward for them. And we see many, many customers that simply by doing a appliance change, uh, with their existing backup data can immediately achieve uh, improvements in backup performance, immediately achieve performance um, improvements in restore. Um, and that you know, is always a, a big deal whenever we do a tech refresh because our sales organization and our partners really take that message to all of our customers um, everywhere around the globe. People in the audience may not remember, I mean, we used to do all this backup with tape yeah. <laughs> and, and so data domain really disrupted that and then became the sort of the staple. It was a very innovative technology at the time and it's continued to, to advance. We heard earlier the, the performance improvements. It's also interesting that Commvault recently announced support for data domain boost API. What is the significance? First of all, wow, you get very interesting mm -hmm. frenemies going on here. But what's the significance of that announcement uh, to both you all, your yep. ecosystem and customers? I mean, one of the realities is that backup appliances come in two flavors, you know, integrated and target. Integrated appliances from us you know, run uh, with our own um, software stack. Target appliances, as the name suggests, can be a target for any backup and recovery application. And that's been true since you know, really the beginning of, of the uh, availability of data domain appliances. With Commvault's uh, integration, um, an API level integration. The nice thing for us is that four out of six of the Gartner Magic Quadrant enterprise backup and recovery leaders now have API level integration with data domain appliances. So that really gives customers uh, a great choice. Sure, we would love all of our customers to be running Dell software with Dell target based appliances, but the reality is that the backup application market has been around for a very long time. So many customers choose you know, either um, a different solution or they might combine multiple solutions together and date in the main becomes the common denominator for them. One thing that's really nice about this, and I was kind of in, in the position at the beginning of this relationship, was that it really was customer driven. Customers had Commvault and Data Domain, they had experience with both, and they realized that you know, working the two of them together in a, in a kind of a non-integrated fashion wasn't living up to their expectations. Uh, this integration actually helps drive the simplicity and really maximizes what both solutions can do. And across the board, we're seeing simplicity uh, driving this industry. 
Um, the other part, uh, you know, to your point, is that you know the backup software industry is fractured. There's no vendor that has anywhere more than five, maybe eight percent. I think Dell has twelve, and and, and that becomes an eight hundred pound gorilla. Um, the fact that that we're able to reach so many customers and provide the the things that data domain can do, um, irrespective of their backup software choice. Sure, we'd like it to be Dell, but we also want to be that open system provider that is you know helpful. Smart by you guys, you become the infrastructure standard. You know, open it up a little bit, and it makes the customers happy. It's win win. Data domain, of course, gets a lot of attention. It's a big product category, but maybe you could talk a little bit about sort of the other parts of the portfolio beyond data domain. I'm specifically interested in, in PowerProtect Data Manager and Apex Backup Services. How significant are these offerings and, and how should we think where they fit in the portfolio and, and the whole value chain, if you will, of that portfolio? I think they're both a really big part of our strategy. I think we realized and, and we kind of became aware that simplicity was one of the things, one of the two main things driving adoption and data protection. The other one, of course, being cyber resiliency. But when it comes to simplicity, I think there was a wake-up call in this last decade or so where some new folks in, in, the, in the room kind of came in and, and kind of showed us that the folks were yearning for a backup solution that was simpler. It, it, it allows you to you know, not have as much time in training. It, it increases the accuracy of the job that you're doing. So we took a lot of time and, and, and looked at what we had to offer and decided that data manager uh, was the right way to go. A net new product with simplicity and API control built in from the ground up. It takes a long time to build software that is mature and serves the needs of the larger customers, the enterprise customers. But we really hit an inflection point in this last year with Data Manager where we nearly doubled or, or over doubled the number of customers in a single year. So it is definitely our go forward strategy uh, it's hit a lot of the key workloads and a lot of the key operational maturity that we need to, to work with. And I think with the feedback that we're getting from our customers is it, it's even simpler than some of those new simple solutions that are out there. So we took our lesson and I think we've come up with a great solution. Yeah, the nice thing is, and we've spoken about this in the past, is that we made a couple of key decisions about data manager, especially with our existing customers. Many. Uh, that have been with us for, for many, many years with some of our, our other products. We entitled those customers as part of their support contracts to, to uh, make use of Data Manager. So many of them have introduced it uh, to complement specific workloads, uh, especially, for instance, VMware, VMware vSphere Data Protection. We have some unique IP uh, within PowerProtect Data Manager with transparent snapshots that we've spoken about in the past. So that allows them to, uh, to gain access to a simpler modern platform as simply part of their existing relationship with Dell. So that was point number one. Secondly, we also, because we knew where they were and where we wanted them to go, we were able to do tooling to help them transition their policies, their agents from older technologies uh, that many of them uh, are still using to the modern platform uh, as part of our overarching strategy to move them forward in the future. So make no mistake, PowerProtect Data Manager is absolutely our innovation engine as we go forward in the future. You saw last year, um, or actually the year before, we introduced a new integrated appliance using PowerProtect Data Manager. And that you know, is, is kind of the second step. And as we go forward, you'll see us continue to evolve the availability of PowerProtect Data Manager in different form factors. You know, and that would be you know, a big focus for us. And you've got that tooling to make that migration much more facile. That's key for the innovation engine. Earlier, we were discussing the need for trusted infrastructure to support cyber resilience, but multi-cloud complexity is a big challenge for customers and also is a big part of Dell's value proposition, your whole narrative there. What can you tell us about your multi-cloud posture and specifically in this area and your differentiation? So a couple things, and back to your previous question, Apex Backup Services is a big part of our multi-cloud posture. It allows us to reach workloads like Microsoft 365 and Google Cloud and, and so on in the public cloud. It's also a great SaaS-based offering for things like uh, you know edge locations and smaller data centers, and it is growing. It is uh, something that we've had a tremendous uptake from a customer perspective. But all of our data protection technology, the, the PowerProtect data domain platform in its virtual form, uh, as well as PowerProtect Data Manager, are also available in the public cloud. And we didn't just flip a switch and decide to make them available. Dell's 
uh, cloud posture, data protection got there first. We had to start moving a long time ago into the public cloud to follow the workloads, to follow the data, because customers would decide where to replatform, how to platform their data and applications. We had no choice but to simply move along. So around 2015 or 16, you could start seeing our offerings uh, in the public cloud marketplaces. So we have a little bit of a head start and we've matured in terms of how to be cloud native and how to be cloud efficient. And what we're seeing today is a transition from customers away from kind of a cloud first to a multi-cloud and more what you would call a cloud smart strategy. And that's the idea of putting the appropriate applications and data in the cloud or pulling them back on premises as their businesses need change or as their experience evolves. Well, that's, that on-prem experience has really closed the gap with, with cloud. It's, you know, people talk about it's an operating model. And so the, yeah. the difference is, you know, far less than it was, you know, 15 years ago. So. Yeah, I mean, sure. Apex Backup Services was only introduced in the last um, little over three years, you know, 2021, and we're already um, uh, serving over 1,200 customers around the globe. You know, because there's some customers, certainly in the, um, in the, uh, in the medium uh, part of the market, um, that effectively say to themselves, hey, as I move more of my data center to the cloud, I want to move my data protection capabilities to the cloud. So adopting a backup as a service solution um, is available to them through Apex Backup Services. So one of the things we've always said is that you know, we truly want to provide a one-stop shop with the options that our customers really want to take um, from us to solve their challenges. Whether or not that be lift and shift their data protection infrastructure, that they've been working with us on premises and lift it and deploy it as is in the public cloud, whether or not that be AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Platform, or move over to a backup as a service offering, offering, and that's how they can do that with Apex Backup Services. Well, Jensen Wong said you're, you're the number one at end-to-end -end systems. I mean, so who am I to argue with Jensen? <laughs> anyway, the survey data from our friends at ETR shows that the top line tech spending growth remains tepid. And more importantly, Gen AI is stealing from other budget areas. And so cost continues to be a challenge for a lot of organizations, you know, on top of the threats they face that we've been talking about today. So you guys have this tagline of modern, simple, and resilient. But how do you, how do you be those three things and at the same time be, be economically viable? Well, that's where efficiency comes in. And that's something that's always been part of our message. And it's something that we've remained focused on. And I think some of the other folks in the marketplace have really been focused more on the simplicity and then some of the cyber messaging. But we find that efficiency is what drives the affordability and the, and the cost rational uh, side of the solution. Uh, data protection backup in particular has always had to deal with data gravity. How do you store that much data? It could be 20 times more data in your protection copies than you have in your primary copies. And how do you move all that data around, whether it is from one data center to another or to the cloud or so forth? There's a lot of, you know, if there's a lot to be gained if you can make that data very small and move it in an effective fashion. And that shows up on the bottom line too, because how much of a solution do you need to provision in order for uh, the, the, the work to be taken care of. So they go hand in hand. The cost to serve that we have, I think, is, is compelling. Uh, we have a lot of models that we share with our customers on kind of how to right size their data protection solution, how we're going to you know, not guess at what they need to do, not have to add more capacity uh, down the road. And that all comes out in things like our cost to protect uh, surveys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, um you know, often um, customers get uh, marketed uh, cheaper solutions, you know, acquisition price being the focus. But, but backups are not just for Christmas. You know, backups are long-term retention of data. So you have to look at the entire total cost of ownership. And that's really where uh, the Dell data protection infrastructure solutions really pay off on the bottom line is when you look over a three or five year horizon of the total cost of managing those backups. And that's where, you know, with uh, the work we've done with the Enterprise Strategy Group, you know, for literally a cent per gigabyte per month, you can implement Dell data protection solutions on premises. And that's really where, you know, customers get a great benefit from us.
Well, and, and when you think about the business case for data protection, a lot of it is reducing the risk, you know, reducing the expected loss, because uh, what's the probability that you're going to either get hacked or lose data? It's very high. What's the impact of that? It's getting higher, as we know. So the faster you can recover um, and with quality data, the less risk there is. Well, you mentioned that uh, you know one of the big drivers of budget right now is AI, and I would say the second one right now is cyber resiliency. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot more organizations invest in data protection as part of their cyber resiliency posture, and it's not so much about how they think about spending about backup and recovery, but how they look at the total picture and, and what's it going to take to be able to recover from a, you know, a, a small, medium, or large impact cyber event. Rich, Rob, thanks so much for coming on the program. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Thank Dave. you. Okay, up next we get the analyst perspective from Christoph Bertrand. You're watching Building Cyber Resilience on Trusted Data Protection Infrastructure. We'll be right back. <laughs>